A passionate face-off between the Round County clerk Kim Davis and same-sex couples. I'm Sam Dick. Live team coverage from the courthouse of the standoff coming up. With Kim Davis still defying a judge's ruling ordering her to issue marriage licenses, what's next in this case? We talked to a legal expert. And a deadly shooting along a Jackson County road. We're learning new details about the investigation tonight. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. The Supreme today. Court denied your stay. We are not issuing marriage licenses today. So Based I on would, what? I would ask you all to. Why are you not issuing marriage do. licenses today? Because I'm not. Under Why? whose authority whose are you authority? not issuing Under licenses? God's authority. authority. Good evening, Sam Dick reporting live from Moorhead in front of the Rowan County Courthouse. A showdown today, this morning in this courthouse behind me for all to witness. The Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis, up until this morning, had pretty much stayed silent in regards to talking to the people who are demanding a marriage license from her. But that all changed as she came out and argued with the very people she's denying licenses to. Why are you not Go issuing marriage licenses today? Because I'm not. Under Why? whose authority whose are you authority? not issuing Under licenses? God's authority. Did your lawyers tell you? I don't did God tell you to do this? Did God I tell you to treat us? I don't believe like in this? God. I asked you all to leave. You are interrupting my You can call the police. David Moore and David Ermold didn't plan, they say, to get married in the middle of this dispute. They tried for a fourth time today to get their marriage license and sacrificed work time to be here. I drove back from work two hours to come back and get a license. I had to request the time and I canceled two classes yeah. to be here. And that's, I, I have sacrificed people's education to be here today to get denied. The couple thought Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis had exhausted all her legal appeals. Now they are thrust in a media and legal spotlight they say they did not want. Except for a few reporters, it's very quiet now in front of the Rowan County Courthouse. But earlier today, especially this morning, a large crowd of protesters and supporters were out here on this lawn in front of the courthouse. Many of them in the crowd opposing Kim Davis and her actions, but others supporting her. People started gathering early this morning, even before the clerk's office opened. Some were chanting, some were singing, and that continued through into the afternoon. The crowd split down the sidewalk. People on both sides said they were standing up for what they think is right. This lady should not be a having to endure the persecution that she's having to endure. We're here for equality, we're here for equal rights, and we're here for the love that we all have in our hearts. Well, the Rowan County Sheriff says he didn't have any problems with the people here, and as we've been here most of the day, we've had several reporters with us as well. Uh, there really hasn't been any problems that we have witnessed, so that's good on that part. Now that Kim Davis is still refusing to issue marriage license, though, what is next in the legal battle that's been going on now since June? Attorneys for some couples denied licenses have filed a petition asking Davis to be held in contempt of court. So a judge has summoned Davis and her deputy clerks to federal court at 11 a.m. on Thursday in Ashland. Kristen Kennedy joins us now from the live desk at WKYT back in Lexington with more on the new legal developments. Kristen. Sam, Kim Davis and her deputies will be in federal court in Ashland Thursday. The judge says if she wants to respond to the petition to hold her in contempt, she must file that response by the close of business tomorrow. Judge David Bunning issued a court order Tuesday afternoon setting the date and time Kim Davis and her deputy clerks must appear in court. Thursday morning's hearing will discuss the motion that he hold Davis in contempt. Civil contempt means that you are not obeying an order issued by a court with the power to order you to do something. And Judge Bunning ordered her to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples. She's refusing to do that. University of Kentucky professor Allison Connolly, a former public advocate and at one time the chief public defender for the state, says Judge Bunning could rule a number of ways if he does find Davis in contempt. Could she be thrown in jail? That is a possibility under a civil contempt citation. Uh, it's kind of this notion you hold the key to your own cell. You can get out when you comply with the law. Now, I, if I was a betting person, I don't think Judge Bunning will do that. I think what he may do is just issue, issue a hefty fine, and it'll be a daily fine that will accrue until she decides to obey the law. One thing the judge cannot do 
is fire her. The Supreme Court of Kentucky has a constitutional authority where they can remove a circuit clerk but not a county clerk. And so that really is an executive branch function. Uh, the governor would have to be in charge of that. There may have to be a special session call to deal with it or refer to the Department of Local Government. Davis's response to the motion to find her in contempt must be filed tomorrow and cannot exceed five pages. At the live desk, Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Kristen, thank you. We and you at home have heard a lot about Kim Davis and some of her background. We know certainly that her religious convictions are at the center of her argument not to issue marriage licenses, but we wanted to learn more about Davis and her faith. So Miranda Combs is tracking that down tonight. She has said no when the law of the land told her to say yes. And that's made Kim Davis a lightning rod. Perched in a public office in the Rowan County Courthouse. But who is Kim Davis? This woman now trending on Twitter and catching national headlines. We spent the day trying to find out. Hey, how are you? Several people told us this. Solid Rock Apostolic Church in Farmers just outside Moorhead is her church home. No one would talk inside the church. The pastor then told us he'd meet us there in five minutes. 20 minutes later, he called. So if you talk to us, then that would give people a better understanding of where she's coming from in regard to her faith. He refused an interview, worried about death threats that Davis has received and his words being twisted by the media. But in a statement released today by the Liberty Council from Kim Davis, she says following the death of her godly mother-in-law over four years ago, Davis went to church to fulfill her dying wish. Davis's statement goes on to explain that she's worked in the Rowan County Clerk's Office for 27 years as the deputy clerk. She just took office as clerk this past January. Her mother was clerk before her for 35 years. That's whose name is at the bottom of Davis's fourth marriage license. In a WKYT record search, we found Davis has been divorced three times. Her last marriage was in 2009 to Joe Davis. Miranda joins us now live, and a lot of people, Miranda, are curious about how much money does Kim Davis make a salary as the clerk inside that courthouse? And we were curious, too. We had some knowledge to maybe what it was, but couldn't nail it down, so we actually went into Davis's office this morning. The deputy said she didn't know and didn't know where we could find out, so we got the state involved, and they started looking into it. And then, sure enough, the judge executive walked out this evening to interview with Sean Moody, and I, had, I asked him, and he said, not 80, what, are, what some of the 80, other, judges, yes, 80,000, so that's taxpayer dollars. All right, Miranda, mm -hmm. thank you for your work today. Well, we have more on this, and this is really interesting. We took a look at what it means to be an apostolic Christian, which is what the, the faith that Kim Davis practices. Members spend time daily in prayer, and they read from the Bible. They are instructed to be humble, careful servants of God and to dress modestly. The church says that men should look masculine and women should look feminine. Women are encouraged to have their long hair modestly arranged and refrain from use of makeup. And jewelry is discouraged. Members are taught to exercise discernment in use of the media and entertainment. They believe in strong family bonds and strong homes. And women are encouraged to stay home while children are young. The church also says divorce is rare. Now on WKYT.com, we have much more coverage on what is happening here today and what will happen in Ashland in two days over this marriage license issue in Rowan County. On our website, you will find the raw video, so every second of it, of the confrontation between same-sex couples this morning and Kim Davis in her office. You'll also find her complete statement that she released through her attorneys. Amber, that's the latest from Rowan County. I talked to an official here in the county, and he says... I asked him, what if Kim Davis doesn't show up Thursday in front of this federal judge? He said she'll be there. She would face some dire consequences if for some reason she didn't show up. So we have every expectation that Kim Davis and her deputy clerks from this courthouse behind me will be in Ashland at 11 a.m. in front of that federal judge. Back to you. All right, Sam, thank you so much. And we will be there, of course, following this story as it certainly continues. What started as an argument, but police say it ended with someone dead. Tonight, we are learning more about a shooting in Jackson County. State police say it happened around 1 this afternoon on Chestnut Flat Road near the Sand Gap community. Sam Smith tells us police are still trying to figure out what led to the deadly shooting. 
I'm standing along Chestnut Flat Road. It's the scene of a death investigation here in Jackson County. Kentucky State Police received a call about a shooting in the 2200 block of Chestnut Flat Road around 1 o'clock this afternoon. Kentucky State Police say a man was found dead lying on the road. I'm told the initial investigation says there was some type of altercation that led up to the shooting. The deceased has not been identified. Police have not said how the shooter and the victim know each other. Uh, we do have uh, a, the person that we believe uh, may have shot, fired the shots today. Uh, he has be de been detained and we're trying to learn and, and, and interview him and, and figure out exactly what happened and what his involvement may be. Now this investigation is ongoing. Kentucky State Police are still trying to figure out what led up to the shooting. In Jackson County, Sam Smith, WKYT. The state police say right now they are interviewing people who witnessed that shooting. We have an alert tonight for customers of the University of Kentucky Federal Credit Union. Officials say a system error is keeping those customers from using their debit cards. The credit union says it, it now is in the process of reactivating all of those cards, and the problem should be fixed in the next few hours. The computer issue is not affecting online banking, credit cards, or checks. Up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. New tonight, leaders of Blackburn Correctional Complex in Lexington tell us they've been making some security changes at the prison. It comes after seven inmates have walked away just this year, two of them in the last few weeks. The Kentucky Department of Corrections tells us officials review every escape to determine how it happened and to prevent it from happening again. The department wouldn't say what changes have been made, but officials say in the last 10 years, Blackburn has an escape rate of less than 1%. Also new tonight, a Round County man has been charged after police say he attacked his wife at the school where she teaches. Police arrested 46-year-old Dale Eastep yesterday. They say he showed up at McBrayer Elementary School yesterday afternoon, hit his wife, and knocked her into a door during an argument. Police say Eastep's wife was not seriously injured. Police charged Eastep with fourth-degree assault. He has since bonded out of jail. Tonight, firefighters are still trying to figure out what caused a large fire in downtown Hazard this morning. That fire destroyed Peking Chinese Restaurant and some apartments above it along Main Street. Firefighters say no one was seriously injured, but they do say several families have lost their homes. That building is nearly 100 years old. It was once home to the Grand Hotel.